It's no secret that summer can feature some nasty storms. Big, sprawling storm complexes roam the nation's heartland, the Ohio Valley, the Southeast, and the Mid-Atlantic. They can deliver damaging winds, covering hundreds of miles or more and raging through the night. They often form on sizzling summer days with steamy humidity and temperatures approaching 100 degrees. And they can hit day after day, the atmosphere reloading each afternoon and priming the environment for nasty evening storms. We're talking about MCSs, or Mesoscale Convective Systems. It's a fancy name for a cluster or arcing band of thunderstorms common in the summertime. MCSs are often severe and produce incredible amounts of lightning. They feed off of robust instability, or CAPE. CAPE stands for Convective Available Potential Energy. That's the fuel in warm, humid air to cook up severe storms. One thing we know about MCSs is that they don't require a big trigger. Even a subtle atmospheric nudge can brew a nasty storm complex. Once an MCS starts, it's like igniting a powder keg. It will gobble up all the fuel around, and the results can be atmospherically explosive. MCSs rarely produce big hail, and they usually move quickly enough that flooding isn't an issue. Let's first talk about where MCSs form. The most common type of MCSs are ridge riders. They form on the edge of high-pressure heat domes and then straddle the dome's periphery. That's because of two reasons. Number one, storms love to feed off boundaries. That happens at the fringe of the heat dome. It's hot and humid beneath the dome and cooler and drier to the north. And number two, the heat dome is like a magic force field. It deflects the jet stream to the north. These special MCSs, or ridge riders as they're called, surf the jet stream to the east. They tap into those strong winds to grow, all while mixing some of those winds to the surface in the form of damaging gusts. That's how derechos work. Derechos are ultra-intense MCSs. They have to produce a swath of wind at least 240 miles long. There also need to be a few hurricane force gusts. So what spells the demise of an MCS? Usually, sunrise. That's because the rising sun heats the ground, which in turn heats the air above it. That causes pockets of air to rise, poking into and interrupting the low-level jet stream. MCSs rely on that low-level jet stream for venting, or the removal of spent, used air. Some exhaust air also falls in the storm system's wake. Once the low-level jet weakens in the morning with sunrise, the MCS begins to fragment and fall apart. Now, if we look at an MCS on radar, you might notice it takes on the form of an archer's bow. Strong winds push the middle of the line ahead of the ends. The northern end curls back on itself, acquiring a counterclockwise spin. We call that the northern bookend vortex. It can occasionally produce tornadoes. Even if it doesn't, it can survive beyond the MCS's demise. The little leftover swirl becomes a remnant mesolo, or mesoscale convective vortex. So-called MCVs can enhance wind fields the next day, boosting low-level easterly winds and twists. That can spawn tornadoes. That's exactly what happened on July 19th, when a remnant MCV bolstered low-level easterlies over North Carolina. Here is a look at that MCV on satellite. See if you can spot a weak swirl in the cloud cover. That enhanced shear, or change of wind speed in our direction with height, produced a monstrous EF3 tornado in Nash County, North Carolina. It was so powerful that debris was lofted to 20,000 feet. That appeared as an ominous purple splotch on radar. Now, MCSs also produce one more thing that people forget. Lightning mega flashes. Because MCSs are so large, they have horizontally expansive electric fields. That can allow giant lightning bolts to crawl along the complex. On April 29, 2020, an MCS sparked a 477-mile-long lightning bolt that leapt from near Houston to southern Mississippi. That's the equivalent to the distance between Columbus, Ohio and New York City. South America also gets prolific MCSs that can produce mega flashes. This one produced a 440-mile-long bolt over Brazil on Halloween night 2018. And some of these MCS-induced mega flashes last a long time. On June 18, 2020, a mega flash over Uruguay and Argentina lasted 17.1 seconds. Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, 
Amazon Alexa, Xbox and Windows.